I will uh, sh uh, share with you some uh, review about thermodynamics, which you have already had in, thermo in thermodynamics subject. Okay. For example, you can also, uh, you know, um, uh, open your mic during my presentation. Do not have to interrupt me. It's okay. I will try to answer your question if you have any questions during my presentation. Okay. Uh, first of all, I have already told you in the previous part which thermodynamics is going is discussing about power and heat. How we can produce power from heat or we can, how we can use power to uh, capture or to release heat uh, from a system. And then we will see all of these uh, definitions for this power you have already need to know about that. You remember what is the first law? Any one of you can open your mic and tell me what is the first law, do you remember? If there isn't any volunteer, I need to call you myself to answer. Okay, if any one of you uh, want to answer, please open your mic and say that. Um, sir. Yes, please. I uh, just first of all introduce yourself and say uh, what you are going to say. Okay, my name is Sir. Uh, the answer is energy can be in a decade. Okay, okay. Yep, exactly. Energy cannot be created or destroyed during a process. It forms only can change during a process. For example, from kinetic, like what you can see here, here we have potential energy during this falling down process, actually. <sighs> the, uh, some a part of the potential energy is converted to the kinetic energy. How about second law of thermodynamics? Do you remember? Any idea? If you don't remember, it's okay. You can search on the web. You can open your notes, which may you have from last term or from thermodynamic subject, which you have had uh, previously. Also, this question is important. Uh, is there anyone who? Okay, uh, sorry, has no. Please wait a moment. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Uh, is there anyone who uh, had not passed the uh, thermodynamics? That is important for me to know to help you. However, you need to pass thermodynamics then uh, speak or apply thermodynamics, but I don't know, maybe there is some exception as, as well. So good, if there isn't, it's good. If not, please let me know. I will try to help you more about that. Okay, as well, you can. Open your mic, as well. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you can. Uh, you were about to talk about second law. Uh, uh, second law is uh, about the nuclear properties. Okay, about, yeah, about the energy quality. And it says that energy has quality and quantity. An actual process occurs in the direction of decreasing quality of the energy. So, 
energy always is going to decrease. We had introduced this by some other concepts like entropy, if you remember, which is destruction of the energy actually, and so on. And uh, this is also important. We will use these two laws to evaluate the different thermodynamics cycles. And also you have already know not only for this subject, even for the, uh, the other subjects, you know that dimensions and units are important. We have primary dimensions like mass, length, time, and temperature, which are uh, fundamental basics unit actually, which they are, they are not, uh, they have not been created by the other units. But we have also secondary, di secondary dimension like velocity, energy, or volume, which are created based on those primary dimensions, like velocity, which you know it's the distance per time, uh, which is meter per second, for example. And also, uh, we had some important definitions about system, surroundings, boundary, and different types of the system. If you remember, we, uh, for the system, we call a quantity of matter or region in space uh, as a system, which we are interested to study. So generally, we, we, we are going to study uh, something. In thermodynamics, we need to select a system. We need to select a, a part of that, for example a region, a, a mass, for example, we call that system. Here is some example. For example, we select this amount of the space as our system. Anything outside of this system is called surrounding. So we have system surrounding and the boundary which separate, which separate these two from each other are called a boundary. And, uh, Actually, we have two different types of boundary, the uh, movable and also the fixed boundary, the boundary like what you can see here, a piston. For example, imagine we have a cylinder piston device like this. We are going to study the gas inside this piston cylinder. Then our system will be this, the gas inside this cylinder. The boundary of the our system is this. Three boundary uh, of the system are uh, fixed boundary, but this one is moving. So we call that moving boundary. And also, but here uh, just to uh, uh, continue, we have also uh, two type of the system: closed system and open system. Closed system we call that also control mass. Open system also, we call that control volume. Control mass or closed system means a system with when, uh, which we don't have any mass transfer through boundary of the system with the boundary or from uh, uh, with the surrounding through the boundary. And open system or control volume is a system when we have a mass transfer between the system and surrounding through the boundary. And uh, this type of the open system, this type of system or control volume actually are generally be being used for the nozzle, uh, compressor, turbine, and so on, which if you remember in thermodynamics, uh, we discussed about that, about the, or it is discussed actually, different types of the control volume for this type of device. And the difference between this open system and closed system is the mass transfer from the boundary of the system. And the control surface, the control, the control, uh, the boundary which we select, if we uh, uh, look at the system in three dimensional space, then the boundary will be a surface, like what you can see here, for example, for another. So the boundaries of the control volume is control surface because it is a surface actually. If you notice here, it is, here is a cone actually. So it is a surface, not a 
line actually. So we call that a control surface. And this control surface, or even the boundary, can be imaginary or can be real. For example, here this line is a imaginary control surface because we don't have a bound real boundary here. This is just our assumption. But this one is real boundary. Why? Because we have a boundary. It is the wall of the nozzle, for example. And also, it is important to review what is a state and what is equilibrium state actually. Equilibrium means a state of balance. In other words, nothing change uh, in the system with time, but nothing change with the system in the uh, with time in the system can be for different property. For example, if temperature is constant for a system with time, we call that thermal equilibrium. If the pressure of the system doesn't change with time, we call that the system is in mechanical equilibrium state. Or phase equilibrium if a system involves two phases and when the mass of each phase reaches an equilibrium level and stays there. In other words, for example, imagine we have uh, water inside this cylinder piston, we have a steam or water vapor and also liquid. We call that it is in equilibrium condition when the water is not uh, uh, phase changing from liquid to vapor. We call that it is in phase equilibrium condition. And also we may have equilibrium uh, or chemical equilibrium condition in the system. And it means we don't have any chemical process in the system or uh, the uh, there isn't any chemical reaction actually in the system. The other important thing is about process and cycle. Uh, if you remember, we define process as uh, any change that the system undergoes from one equilibrium state to another. Imagine we have a piston cylinder like what you can see in this figure. The system which we select is the gas inside this piston cylinder, uh, cylinder and piston device. And as you can see here, we have initial state, which is state one, and final state, which is state two. If we compress this, you know, initially it is in this state, it is an uh, equilibrium state. If we compress the piston, it will go to a state two, another equilibrium state. Then the uh, how the system change, for example, the properties of the system which we are showing or illustrating in this diagram are the pressure and volume of our system. You can see here the initial volume and pressure of our system or gas inside this piston cylinder are V1 and P1, or pressure uh, at state one, volume at the state one. During this process, it reaches the uh, another equilibrium state, which the pressure and volume are V2 and P2. The volume is decreased, as you can see here, and pressure is increased. So we have another state actually. But how this process is happened, actually, we call that process path. Or in other words, the series of the states through which a system passes during a process. You know that if we stop the piston, for example, here, if we stop the piston here, for example, this point is also, uh, can be another equilibrium state. This point, this point. So you can see this process path is only the, uh, the, uh, the when we connect the different equilibrium states which we have between this state one and state two. So the path is the series of the states through which a system passes during a process. And a cycle is a process actually. But during this process, the initial and final states are identical. In other words, imagine we have uh, another 
you know, another process like this, then you can see a state one to a state two is one process, then another process from a state to a state one. Initial and final state are identical. We call this a cycle and it is important. This definition is important and we will see also because as you know, and I already introduced you, in this course we will mainly discuss about different types of cycles. And also we, had, uh, we have some special type of the uh, cycles which their path is already known. For example, isothermal process, which during that temperature is remain constant. Like what you can see here in PV diagram, it will be like this pressure and volume change in that process, but temperature is changed. This is for ideal gas energy. Or isobaric process, which during that pressure is constant. And in a PV diagram, it will be like this. It's horizontal, you know, here pressure is constant, the volume is changed. And isochoric or isometric process actually is a process which uh, the specific volume remain constant, like what you can see in P V diagram. Pressure is reduced from state one to state two, but volume is constant. We call this isometric process. And also, you need to know what is a steady flow process. If we have a flow to the system, you know, here we have control volume or uh, control mass. Can you tell me, any one of you, here we have a control volume or a control mass and why? In this figure, we have the dashed line is showing con uh, control mass or control volume. Is open system or closed system and why? Anyone there? So I don't understand. You okay? Yeah, you know, in this figure, what is the system in this figure? Yes. The dashed line actually shows the system which we have selected. Okay. So this dashed line is showing a, a open system or a closed system. Open. Okay, why? Because uh, yeah, because mass is crossing the boundary of the system. Thank you very much. Because the mass is crossing the boundary of the system, we have a control volume. And one important thing about the control volume is, you know, we have a mass, a substance which come to the system. So the properties of the system may change due to this mass introduction to the system or mass uh, exit out of the system. But if the mass which comes to the system is equal to the mass which goes off the system by time, the amount of that, or mass flow rate of the system to the system and from the system are identical, we have we, a, a steady uh, flow process or we have a flow which, is, which doesn't change with time. So we call that a steady flow actually. So a steady flow process is a process during which a fluid flows through a control volume steadily. Steadily means the flow rate doesn't change with time. Then by this, we can actually evaluate the system easily and uh, it will help us to have more simple equation to find different properties for the system. And also one important, uh, one more important thing is, uh, which you need to know is Carnot cycle. The Carnot cycle is introduced in thermodynamics and uh, this cycle includes uh, four different processes. Process, not cycle actually here.
And all of the processes in this cycle are reversible. If you don't know what is uh, a reversible process or irreversible process, you can refer to the video which uh, is already uh, uh, uploaded in the, my channel and you can review it simply. That, uh, so this type of the cycle, the Carnot cycle includes four different processes. Each process is reversible. And uh, two of these processes are isothermal process, which one of them is expansion isothermal process. The other one is compression isothermal process. And also we have two adiabatic process. If you remember, adiabatic process means no heat transfer with surrounding. But isothermal process means there is heat transfer with the surrounding, but the temperature of the system will be constant during that process which also one of the process will be expansion, the other one will be the compression process. Why this uh, cycle is important? Because it is an ideal cycle. Actually, we cannot have reversible process. And uh, this cycle actually give us an ideal cycle. We can compare the cycle which we have with this idealized cycle to understand how is the efficiency of our cycle and we can compare with the maximum efficiency for example we can get from a cycle first we can imagine our cycle is Carnot cycle we can calculate the uh, we can calculate the uh, we can calculate the thermal efficiency of uh, our cycle by assumption of our cycle as Carnot cycle then we can uh, also evaluate our cycle, the real cycle, our efficiency. Then we can compare the uh, our efficiency, efficiency of our cycle, the actual cycle with Carnot cycle. And as much as the efficiency of the real cycle is closer to the Carnot cycle, it means the cycle is more uh, efficient. Because as you may know, even for Carnot cycle, we don't have 100% efficient cycle. The cycle, the efficiency of cycle depends on uh, different parameters, which we will, which you have seen already in thermodynamics. Here also we will, in especially from next session, we will also review those information, and we will apply those information actually naturally. If you remember, uh, this cycle includes four different processes. The first process is reversible isothermal expansion. Imagine we have a piston cylinder like what you can see here. Gen usually we use piston cylinder equipment to illustrate different types of the cycle because it is easy to understand. Imagine we have a piston cylinder, what you can see here. All of the uh, piston cylinder is uh, uh, isolated and we don't have any heat transfer. Only we have heat transfer between the head of this cylinder, between our system is the gas inside this piston cylinder device. We have, and for the first process, we have a heat uh, source of energy. Then we uh, give, will give the thermal energy to our system. Thermal energy is transferred from the, this heat source energy to the uh, gas inside the piston cylinder device. If temperature is increased, so as you may uh, know, temperature is increased, then its uh, volume also is uh, will increase. If the piston, uh, you know, if we use force, if we have any block here, for example, the pressure of the system will increase. But because it is a frictionless piston, actually, it is our assumption, due to this heat transfer to the, this gas inside the cylinder, if the pressure is increased, then this, uh, its pressure will increase and it will push the piston to right side. We have an expansion process, which is isothermal. Why? Because temperature, however, temperature is, is uh, transfer to the gas inside the piston cylinder, but 
its temperature will remain constant. The excess temperature come to the gas will be used to increase the volume uh, of the system machine. So we have a reversible isothermal expansion. After that, for the second process, we remove that heat source, we substitute by uh, an uh, insulation substance, and we, uh, we for uh, this expansion process, you know, because, you know, it starts to go to the right side, the expansion, then we remove this heat sink, uh, substitute by this insulation uh, substance or material, then we don't have any heat transfer to the system. But the expansion, and we continue this expansion process, actually. Then this expansion process will continue until its temperature reduced from TH to TL. Its initial temperature is TH, its final temperature is TL, which is equilibrium temperature, actually. This TL is surrounding temperature. So the temperature will reduce to T L actually. This is reversible adiabatic expansion. The third process is when we push, we start to push the piston to the, uh, or the com we compress the system. And also we put a energy sink in contact with cylinder head of the, uh, of this piston cylinder device. Then the temperature, you know, here when we compress the gas, the temperature will start to increase. But because we put these energy sinks here, that it, the temperature will start to increase, but the temperature will transfer to this sink. So temperature will remain constant during this compression process. And because of that, we call this isothermal compression process. And it is reversible because we don't have any, it is our assumption actually, we don't have any friction and we assume that it is reversible process. And the final step is when, we, the final process actually is when we remove this energy sink, substitute by this insulation material and we'll, we continue the uh, compression process. It is adiabatic because we don't have any heat transfer with surrounding and its temperature increase. We continue this temperature process until we go back to its initial state. You know, remember, this is initial state, state one. We go back to initial state, then its temperature will also increase from TL to TH. So you can see here how this uh, uh, cycle, actually, Carnot cycle happens is uh, happen and you can see two different uh, uh, types of the process, adiabatic and isothermal process for two different compression and uh, expansion process. This is the important process and we use this process, especially the graphs of this process. Okay, I think now you can uh, see the PV diagram. TS diagram of a current cycle, as I said, we have isothermal, you know, uh, process from state one to state two. If you remember, the volume is decreased, the pressure, uh, the volume is increased, and it is expansion process, the pressure is decreased. And during that process, TH is constant. We have Q in, energy transfer, amount energy transfer to the system. And uh, stay from state two to state three, we have isentropic process or uh, adiabatic process actually. Isentropic and adiabatic are identical. And from state three to four, we have again an uh, isothermal process. Temperature is constant, but this time the temperature of the system is PL, and we have Q out from the system to the uh, surrounding to the heat sink. And finally, from state four to state one, which makes this actually a cycle. We'll go back to initial state. 
which is again an isentropic process. You remove the heating, you put that uh, insulation substance, and finally we will have again a. Uh, we will again go back to a state one. So this is PV diagram for this process, and TS di uh, diagram for this cycle as well will be like this, which is I think much easier than PV diagram. The, uh, as you know, for the isothermal process, temperature is constant. So state one to state two, this process from state one to state two is constant temperature process or isothermal process, which is TH. During this process, T is constant and it is equal to TH. From state two to state three, we have isentropic process. If you remember in TS diagram, you know, isentropic process means entropy is constant. So S is constant from state two to state three, and temperature of the system is reduced from TH to TL. And uh, from state three to state four, we have again an isothermal process, but this time temperature of the system is TL. So TL is constant during this process. But entropy is changed. Again, from a state four to a state one, we have again an isentropic process or um, adiabatic uh, process. Actually, the uh, temperature of the system is changed, but entropy is constant. Like this, we can draw the GS diagram for Carnot cycle. As I said, this is only an imaginary. Cycle, we will use this to uh, find thermal efficiency of actual cycle. The efficiency of uh, Carnot cycle is equal to 1 minus TL divided by TH. TL is the minimum temperature of the system during the cycle, and TH is the maximum temperature of the system during the <coughs> cycle. Maybe some information are not familiar, or you may forget them. But please go back and review this information. We need this information even for applied thermodynamics subject. Okay, so by this slide, we reach the end of uh, today's session actually.